Hey, so CES 2022, or the Consumer Electronics Show 2022, has actually been going down, believe it or not, and it's given us a bunch of stuff in the gaming world. We've got a roundup here of everything new and gaming related you need to know about. So let's just jump in. We got 10 things, so let's get started off with number 10. One of the bigger things, obviously, Nvidia had a very dominating presence here. They announced the kind of high-end gaming laptop-focused RTX 3070 Ti and RTX 3070. 3080 Ti. So this is a high-end card and essentially an upper mid-range card and laptop gaming technology has come a long way. The days of like the big bulky nasty power hungry machines are going away. I mean they're still power hungry but they're way less bulky and a bit more efficient and user friendly. These new cards definitely pave the way for that to continue to be a thing. As of right now specs wise we just know that they're aiming for 120 frames per second at 1440p. That is specifically the 3080 Ti whereas the 3070 Ti has been said to push 100 frames per second at 1440p. It is estimated to have eight gigabytes of VRAM because we know officially that the 3080 has 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. So expect these chips to start showing up soon in the typical gaming laptop partners that they have, MSI, Razer, Alienware, stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about Nvidia. We'll highlight more later in this video, but let's move on. Now, next with number nine, some other new PC hardware we got is a keyboard from ROG or Republic of Gamers. This is Asus's gaming brand. The Strix Flare 2 Animate is a mechanical keyboard that like does all your usual gaming mechanical keyboard stuff, but this one has an LED display in the corner. Ooh, you know, priced at 220 bucks, you might be wondering what this display is for. Well, it can show system info like time, date, and battery life, it can also display display animations and logos, so not too much. And uh, this hit headlines, but it isn't exactly new to the keyboard game anyway. There have been a few enthusiast boards that have had LED screens on board in the past that show the same kind of info, except they aren't the size of this display. Think of something more in line with like the screen on a calculator, but it gets the job done. It also, this thing has media controls and RGB like other gaming keyboards. And it also has a wrist rest with a diffuser built in to show off your RGB. Be. There's always like one big new shining piece of gaming hardware at CES and this is one of them this year. Oh, and along with that, speaking of nice things, I feel like we gotta mention Project Sophia. This is Razer's next big thing. And by that, I mean, every so often they come out with these new product ideas that never really hit the mainstream market. They're more like crazy over the top prototypes. We never know which way they're gonna go, but Project Sophia is essentially being billed the world's first modular gaming desk concept. And it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's a really sleek, simple table, but with all this stuff, that is completely modular and changeable. All these modules allow you to do different things, monitor your system, shortcuts, lighting, everything with a beautiful screen. It's really over the top, but hopefully this starts to be the gaming desk of the future. Who knows? Now, next over at number eight, the newest Aya Neo has been revealed. It's called the Next. Now, we've kind of known about this a little bit, but for those of you that don't know, the Aya Neo is essentially like a Steam Deck, but it was before the Steam Deck. So this is a handheld device in a Nintendo Switch-like body uh, that packs some pretty beefy specs and it runs Windows and it lets you play your PC games, whether you play on Steam, Epic, whatever. We've tested this device in the past. The potential seems cool. It's a little unwieldy, uh, but our unit broke. Still, some people have been enjoying these devices. Of course, if you have the expendable cash, these are usually upwards of $1,000. And the new Aya Neo Next is going to have an AMD Ryzen 7 5800. It's gonna have 32 gigs of RAM and there are multiple SKUs of this thing with little differences. The Aya Neo Next, the Aya Neo Next Advance, the Advanced Signature Edition, and the Pro. These things haven't completely taken off yet, probably because of their pretty high price, but full PC gaming on the go uh, without streaming is becoming more of a thing. So keep your eyes on it. Next over at number seven, Asus announced a new ROG gaming router, but it's actually pretty exciting. It's technically the world's first quad band Wi-Fi 6E gaming focused router. Now we've had these types of routers before, uh, but this one is marketed specifically towards gamers. So uh, what essentially this is, is a beefy, badass Wi-Fi router with a ton of different bands. It has 2.4 gigahertz, two five gigahertz, and a six gigahertz. And it's using the latest Wi-Fi tech, it's got everything you need, and it's probably going to be a beast. It's also going to cost $650, so uh, good luck with that one.
Now, next over at number six, Samsung loves to really push the limits with their tech, especially with their screens, and their new Samsung Odyssey Arc monitor definitely does that. This curved display is 55 inches with a 16 by nine aspect ratio and a 4K resolution. And yeah, like you're looking at this, it's ridiculous. Uh, you can also turn it on its side and you can use it vertically and it literally like towers over you. Uh, previews seem to show that you don't ruin the integrity of the content you're playing or watching when using the monitor vertically. Uh, it also features a wireless dial controller that you can use to manage the monitor. This is definitely overkill, but sometimes overkill is awesome. You know, sometimes with tech at CES, it's a little over the top, you know, but we we love ultra wide displays here for both gaming and everyday use like for work and this thing seems like a dream to use. Uh, we don't have any other info on it yet like a price or a release date but hopefully we get more info on this beast soon. Next over at number five, jumping back to NVIDIA. NVIDIA announced the RTX 3050 GPU. This is a discrete graphics card. It's gonna have eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and it technically will support DLSS and ray tracing. Now, to what extent? Probably not a lot because this is a budget card, but it's actually a pretty damn good price, 250 bucks, making it in the realm of affordability for some low budget builds while actually getting something decent. That being said, with chipset availability, and shortages and everything like that and scalpers. Uh, good luck getting this thing soon and for that price. But along with that, of course, AMD also announced their own smaller scale graphics card, a discrete card that's gonna cost $200. The Radeon RX 6500 XT is coming out this January and it's gonna be really affordable if you can get your hands on it. Still, we think over time, this competition, this everybody trying to get the most power for the least amount of money is probably gonna be good for the consumer, especially the novice builder who wants a PC but doesn't want to spend a ton of money. Even though we were being a little cynical, it's definitely a step in the right direction. This is good stuff. Now, next over at number four, Sony had some PSVR news to share with us, and some of it is really exciting. You know, now keep in mind, they're still doing their thing that they've been doing here with the PSVR 2. They're slowly trickling out information. Uh, you know, they give details and specs. They don't actually show the device itself, and they didn't hear, so we still don't know what it looks like, and we don't really have much to show, but new juicy details. I'm gonna get the one that we're the most excited about out of the way first. It's a single cord setup. Now for most VR people, that's the norm now, but this technology has been evolving quickly, you know? The PSVR had a convoluted setup for most people and making the switch to just one powerful USB-C cord is awesome. We also know that it'll feature 4K HDR and a 110 degree field of view, all of which you'll be seeing at a 200 by 240 QLED display with frame rates of 90 and 120 Hertz. Uh, there's also no need for a PS camera this time around, seeing that this new headset will have headset-based tracking, which, you know, uses sensor, on the headset itself to your tracked controllers. It'll also feature eye tracking. So the headset will detect the motion of your eyes to kind of have an additional input, which should help to make PSVR 2 games feel more immersive. There are also rumble motors in the headset that we previously kind of knew about that will help immerse the player. They also gave us a couple of new specs and details on the controllers themselves. They're called the PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers. And along with that, Sony announced, you know, the most important things, games. So we got a new PSVR 2 game called Horizon Call of the Mountain. It's a spinoff of Horizon Zero Dawn and seemingly lets you explore this world. It's being built for PSVR 2 specifically. So, you know, we're sure it'll be the app to show off what exactly this new headset is capable of on your PS5. Now, next over at number three, back to NVIDIA. You know, they brought a lot of new announcements. They have the laptop spec stuff. And one of the more important announcements with the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti uh, was the return of their Max-Q technology. Now, if you're a desktop gamer, you probably don't care about this, uh, but it is important. A lot of people were sad to see NVIDIA ditch it a few years back. This tech uses artificial intelligence to move power back and forth between the CPU and GPU, depending on what exact you're using your laptop for. It's really just a big 
AI controlled efficiency thing. It also features something called Battery Boost 2.0, which gets you 70% more uptime as long as you have a stable enough power source charging your laptop. So your GPU will actually be able to control your CPU and make it work more efficiently depending on your workload and depending on the specific specs in the laptop. Whether you're strictly gaming or maybe using an application that uses a lot of CPU power, this is something that in theory should benefit the owner pretty greatly. Now down to number two, it is important to know that Intel has announced a suite of 22 new 12th gen CPUs for computer desktops. This is the Alder Lake line. We've had some of this, but now we have 22 new chips. From the higher end Core i9-12900 down to like the really cheapy Celeron stuff. Basically the stuff you'd expect. And some of the line is kind of redundant here. There is a lot of stuff, but overall it's more power, more efficiency, and most importantly, more choice, more consumer options, depending on your build, depending on your uses, whether you're gaming or not. There's a lot here. It's pretty complex. So if you want to read up more on this stuff, if CPU stuff excites you, we're going to link all of the news articles down in the description below. It's worth pointing out that we're also very quickly getting new laptops and gaming laptops using the Alder Lake stuff uh, from MSI, Dell, the Acer Predator Triton 500 SE is getting it, and the Razer Blade 15 2022. AMD also announced a suite of new CPUs and GPUs to go along this year. Most specifically, we have the AMD Ryzen 6000 series, which looks like it could be pretty insane. So there's really plenty of good stuff and plenty of choice. Now down to number one, of course, we keep jumping back to NVIDIA. Uh, one of the biggest splashes for gamers was the fact that NVIDIA announced the RTX 3090 Ti, which they are calling an absolute monster of a GPU. But this thing is gonna have 10,752 CUDA cores. It's got 24 gigs of GDDR6X video memory. It's gonna be tuned faster though. It's got a bunch of teraflops and it is an absolute beast. And the thing for me that surprised me the most was the fact that they're calling it not Ti, they're calling it Ti. I'm gonna stick with TI. So this thing is going to be expensive. It's going to be hard to get. It's not really gonna work for most people's PC builds, but people are gonna have the option if they wanna go crazy. And I like that Nvidia will announce something crazy like this, but at the very least also announce the budget accessible GPU that we talked about earlier, the 3060. So there's a lot to unpack with all of this. If you're looking to build a PC, prices are still crazy right now, but over time, you have some exciting stuff to look forward to. CES 2022 brought us a good amount of things. So we wanna hear from you guys in the comments what you enjoyed the most. What announcement are you the most excited for? Is it something realistic, like an affordable graphics card, or is it something insane, like a weird, crazy monitor? Let's talk anything CES 2022 gaming or not down in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this video and was informed, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, man, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.